Okay, go. All right. Thank you, everybody. My name is Andrew Grant. Um, thanks for taking the time to uh, be here today, taking out your free time. Thank you for putting on a smile if you're forced to be here. I'm happy, you guys. Um, and we'll just get right to it. Um, I first want to start with a little bit about um, my background, where I come from. So I'm the second of four boys. There's myself, there's my little brother Connor, myself, my little brother Dylan, my little brother Coda. <laughs> He's family. Um, and also here's some pictures of like, um, my uh, extended family. And um, I could take a lot of time to speak about each one one-on-one, -on -one, but I do want to speak about two people in particular who I feel really helped me out academically. Um, first, starting with my cousin Ashley on either end. She um, really taught me how working hard in high school will pay off in college. She had like over a 4.0 in high school, all these insane uh, extracurriculars all the time, never had any free time, and she only applied to one school. She got into that school, and then she graduated with a BFA in musical theater from New York University. Um, uh, actually, she was in uh, Wicked, so just like on the stage of it. Um, and also, uh, there was my older brother, Connor, who he helped me out a lot. He kind of taught me how to, I can like balance throughout high school, like having a social life while being able to still maintain good grades. And during my, um, when I was choosing what college I wanted to go to, he was really, really helpful. And he, he was always the first person I let know. Um, and he ultimately helped me come to the decision that I ended up choosing. Uh, and these are just some of the many people who have shaped me into the person that I am today. Each person on here is just formed, shaped me in a little bit differently. And I have to thank every person on here, not even to mention the people I didn't picture who really um, molded me into who I am. I think that extracurriculars are just as, if not more, important than a lot of the academic work that we do here. Um, one of the first things I did over here was leadership. So starting my sophomore year, I joined the leadership team um, and I had a really good time with Ms. Graham. And she asked me at the end of the year if I would like to come back as the intramural sports commissioner. I was like, yeah, that sounds awesome. Dozier Libby doesn't have really any sports, so it would be kind of nice to, it'd be kind of like my own thing, something that I can take on and make my own. And it was kind of nice seeing all these students here who are really into their sports who um, aren't who aren't doing it here, and they would come up to me asking, "Hey, does does like a flag football sound cool? Does volleyball sound cool?" And it was kind of nice having people um, come up to me for stuff like that. I also did two P tobacco training, which we just finished last week. Um, that was where we uh, teach uh, freshmen about the um, health risks of tobacco, and it's not necessarily like a shove down your throat, like do not smoke type of thing, but more of like. This is the information, and we understand that you know that cigarettes are bad, and this is what happens, because um, either way, you are going to make your own decision, but these are the facts. Um, and then one thing that really, really stuck with me was diversity training, which uh, my freshman year, I was a student in Ms. Pearson's class, and diversity trainers came in, and they would teach us about cultural sensitivity, about prejudices, about uh, stereotypes and stuff like that, and it was just a really powerful thing that we got to do. And I was really thrilled when I was asked to come and become a trainer. Um, this is my certificate I got three years ago. Um, and that's been a really interesting journey because I've grown through there and it's kind of shaped me into the kind of leader that I am today. Um, so anyone who knows me knows I work a lot. Um, I had my very first job when I turned 16 at Jamba Juice. Um, my older brother worked there before I did. And when he left for college, he uh, left me a reference, and I got hired there, which was a really awesome experience. It's always going to be my first job. I met a lot of awesome people there. And this is actually my first, first my very last day. Um, and then about two weeks after this, I got hired at Red Chili's, uh, where I'm there right now. I'm the host. Um, I love it. I love working in a restaurant. It's a lot of fun. Um, and for both of these jobs, um, while I was doing both of these, um, during my school day, I was working at the snack bar. So uh, I would give up um, part of my lunch to work at the snack bar. And it just seemed like such a little thing. Like I didn't need that long of lunch. I usually just eat and talk to my friends and it's whatever. And so I was like thinking, while I'm here, I might as well make the best of the time that I have. And so I started working here. Just as a side note, Rana, who works in the cafeteria, is the greatest lady you'll ever meet in your life. Really thank them for what they do, because they really do do a lot, even though you don't see it. Okay, back to <laughs> That's just a side note, they're really awesome people. 
Um, all of this is uh, so I can save money because in the fall I'm going to be attending UC Davis. Um, it was a really hard decision. I was really between UC Davis and UC Santa Barbara, and all these teachers know I was talking to you guys all the time. Um, and like I said, my brother, as well as some of my own experiences and other people I know, helped me come to the conclusion that this is where I want to be. So in the fall, I'm going to be uh, going to UC Davis. I'm studying neurobiology, physiology, and behavior. Um, and so I thought this picture was very, uh, very appropriate because what I want to do is I want to completely understand the human body and I want to go off to med school. And I have been told that sometimes they don't want a hardcore science. And I looked through other majors and there was just nothing else that really appealed to me. And I really like the idea of neuroscience because of the fact that I feel if you can understand the brain, the most complicated thing that man knows, then you can understand almost anything else. And I thought that was an amazing, amazing thing. So that's why I want to major in that. Um, and with that, I want, like I said, I want to go off to medical school. I want to become a doctor. And so I understand that there are um, some things I'm going to have to learn, like, uh, for instance, math, which is I have a love-hate relationship with because when I understand it, because <laughs> we're so late. Because <laughs> when I understand it, I really understand it. And when I don't, I really don't. Um, and so uh, math has played a really big part here because I feel I've really been taught like the fundamentals of algebraic expression and stuff like that. And so I feel a little bit more ready for um, next year. I, if I had one regret for my senior year is that the fact that I did not take calculus. Um, I understand a lot of you guys are struggling, but next year I don't take calculus, but I take biological calculus. Mm. That's scary. <laughs> um, so. Um, and so yeah, I've, like from Miss O'Connor and uh, Miss Angus and stuff like that, like I've, I feel very comfortable and I feel also that I can approach them for any help that I may need, which is a really great feeling. Uh, All right, so we've come to my thesis. I walked into Doja Libby Medical High School, a driven individual looking for a new challenge. This challenge proved to be more overwhelming than I ever imagined. However, it shaped me into a college-ready student who knows how to use a variety of innovative media to obtain and display information, use that information to educate others in both public and interpersonal settings, as well as being able to adapt to change during times of unexpected crisis. So I first want to start off with a quote. Aww. Wise men speak because they have something to say. Fools, because they have to say something. It's not necessarily that you have to speak that makes, or communicating that makes you um, good, it's what you have to say, it's the content that really matters. And so what I've uh, learned here is that uh, speaking because you actually have something to say, because something needs to change, is a really, really powerful thing. Um, and so my very first year at Doja Libby, I had my first integrated project, which was the Good Eats Project. Um, we were assigned a topic in a group, and so mine was with Alex Felix and Maria Campos. Um, and our topic was on binge drinking. And it was helpful because Maria, um, she was a junior at the time, but she wasn't here for her freshman year, but she was here for her sophomore, so that's why she was in health one. And she already knew some of the stuff that I didn't know, and so she helped us out a lot. Um, and it was really weird during our advocacy night, um, where the public would come by and we would speak to them <laughs> about um, the dangers of binge drinking, how to rehabilitate from binge drinking and stuff like that. And I had a hard time just like coming up to people who I didn't know and just saying something. I could say something to somebody I knew, like my teacher wanted to know, I could tell them. But I felt really uncomfortable just doing it in the public. And I really quickly realized that I would have to get over that fairly quickly because I'm going to be able, I have to be able to speak to others that I'm not comfortable with and uh, still get my point across. And I felt like this was a really good practice for what we did senior year, which was Be the Change. Um, this was a really interesting project where, um, first of all, in medical ethics, we had spent all year learning about all these different medical malpractices, and um, we had raised awareness about them, and now it was finally time for us to go out into the community and do something about it. So we chose EVA section, which is animal research and animal abuse, um, and we felt really passionately about this. And so we went out into the public, and we went go to the Sun Valley Mall, and we would educate people. And we went into Dojo Libby's classrooms, and we educated the kids. And it was really an interesting experience because what we were teaching was very grotesque, and um, 
like anybody in here who saw the when I came to your classroom to do the Viva section uh, PowerPoint, I apologize because I understand that what we were showing was very gruesome. But I don't apologize for showing you it because the reason why we showed you such we showed you reality and we felt if we weren't giving you the full picture, then we weren't doing our topic justice. And so in here I really learned that you know sometimes you just gotta you just gotta go through it and you have to get your point across, especially if you want change. Because the reason why so, so many things don't change is because there's nobody there to speak up about it. Um, and so this was really helpful because I was able to speak to people in like a larger setting, but also I've learned at my time here how to speak with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis as well. Uh, during my eighth, or I'm sorry, during um, junior year uh, U.S. history for our final, our job was to find somebody to interview and we had to figure out, we had to ask them about color discrimination in the present day. We had spent all year on the past, so now it was time to focus on the present. And I went back to my old middle school and I saw um, my seventh grade pre-algebra teacher, Mrs. Osakwe. And I really can't imagine a better teacher to have in seventh grade uh, at all. Not a single one. <laughs> um, and so the point of this project was to ask them about their own experiences. And I sat down with her and um, like this is a transcript of everything she said, like word for word what she said. And it was really an interesting moment because as I sat down and I talked with her, it didn't feel like I was doing an interview or that I was just simply extracting information, but it felt like I was like talking with a friend, like I was having an actual conversation. And I feel that because if it was so genuine and it, w and it wasn't just like for the purpose of the assignment, I feel I got so, so much better uh, information. I feel like what she told me was perfect for what my assignment was. And it was interesting because she didn't have any racial discrimination things towards herself, but she said as a teacher, how she sees it in her own students and how she sees the way that they interact with each other, like calling each other derogatory terms. And it was kind of cool seeing like the point of view of somebody who looks down on the younger generation. And that kind of proved to me that, all, yeah, you think it might have been racial discrimination was a long time ago, but it actually is alive and well today. And I was really grateful for her insight on this, and I really think it's gonna um, help me in the future, because as a doctor, you have to interview patients. That's what they call it, interview, when your doctor comes in, and you know, how are you feeling, what's, what's going on, stuff like that, that's just an interview. And, and when you have like that genuine connection between two people, then I feel like you're gonna get better information, and you can use that information to help them out in their treatment in the long run. Um, also, I, I don't want to, I know that my education does not end when I get a medical degree. I know that it's going to continue throughout my life. And I, under, and I want to discover something. Like, that'd be cool to be like, be like, oh, something, something, Dr. Andrew Grant, he, he invented that. That's kind of cool, right? Um, and when you do that, you have to display it to everybody. And you have to give a presentation about what's going on. And so it's really helpful coming to a place where I've been practicing these uh, public skills for so long. So I'm already super comfortable with it, and it's going to help me out with uh, my future endeavors. This is one of my favorite quotes, actually. If your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. And I think that's really good, because I think a leader is so much more than just someone who tells you what to do. Um, beginning my sophomore year, as I mentioned before, I started diversity training. And my very first time teaching was kind of rough because I figured there's the students, they're only like a year younger than me, like they get me, like I'm a student, I know how they think. And it wasn't until I started diversity training that I really realized how hard it is to get, to capture an audience's attention, so like students and stuff like that, because they have all this other stuff going on and, and it was very frustrating. Um, however, as I, uh, worked through diversity training. I first started off as a student, then I became a teacher, then by my junior year I was a leader, and then this year I'm the co-president. And it's really been an awesome journey seeing um, the way my own um, leadership uh, skills have been uh, evolving year by year, class by class. And um, it's really kind of shaped me into who I am. And that really uh, helped me when I started at Heiser. 
because thank you. Um, when I was at Kaiser, I was able to uh, work in the oncology department, and I worked uh, in downstairs, and I was able to um, help out patients, and I was able to bring them where they wanted to go or give them comfort items, um, especially in the oncology department. That was a really sad but really uh, rewarding experience, um, and I, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it, and I took up more than one day a week, um, so I did two days a week, and they noticed that I had this eagerness about me, and I was asked to um, come back downstairs and be a shift leader. And that was really fun because that was like the first time where I had like a title, like you are a leader, which was cool. And I, I learned a lot. I learned, because I, I wanted to teach the um, incoming volunteers the same way I had been taught. And through this experience, I also kind of learned that each person learns a little bit differently in the way this person uh, learns is different than this person. So I had to kind of adapt so that I kind of facilitate everybody. Um, so that they, they each can uh, learn on their own way. Um, and then when it came to school, I really, I really liked our Project Eddie because it was like something we had never done before. Our uh, goal was, we were told, you have to uh, create some sort of device that can be given to somebody with a disability so that they can get back to their passion. And, uh, and I thought back to uh, Sportsman last year where um, we did the spinalist unit, where people would have either like a brain or a cervical um, spine injury, and you can't move them. It's, there's like this whole procedure you have to do to get like these helmets off. And we're like, what about, there should be an easier way to do it. And so, um, actually I should have taken out the helmets in here somewhere. Um, but uh, we created this helmet, oops, uh, we created this helmet that uh, opened on either side to easily get off. and. Um, we had a hard time like uh, figuring out like when we were going to meet up because some of us had work, some of us didn't have a phone, some of us had stuff going on at home, and so it was really hard to manage time. But then once we did get together, then we all sat down at the beginning of the day and we said, "Okay, guys, we only have this amount of time. This is what we need to do. This is how much time we have to do it. Let's go." And and so that was interesting. It was kind of cool making something an actual tangible item. Um, and then we took all these ideas and then we put them into in our Eddy informative essay, where we spoke about all these, oh, there it is. There we go. Um, yeah, so this is right here. Uh, you keep it on your head. And then if you're on the floor, uh, you can't, can't get up, move the hooks, like that. It's hard to put all that stuff together in one cohesive essay, but I've learned from our time here that Sometimes just like little things, like just a transition in a little sentence can really go a long way and kind of bring it all together. And so that was kind of new to me. Um, and this picture is really important to me because if you look up here, a boss is somebody who tells somebody what to do and have them go do it, while a leader is somebody who says, this is what we have to do, now let's work together to complete this. And that's what I want to be. I want to be a leader, not a boss. And in my future career, there's a hierarchy within a hospital but I want to be somebody who says, let's do it together. I do not want to be someone who just gives orders. Because I, I don't respond well to someone simply giving me orders, and I don't expect anyone to respond well as, as well. So I want to be helpful in what I do. My last one is, one machine can do all the work of 50 ordinary men, but no machine can do the work of one extraordinary man. So I believe technology is a very important thing, and we can use that to help a lot of things. However. Um, it's just a medium that I use to display my information, even the, but the, the thing is, it's my information. It's what I, the research that I did. Um, during our lab practical, what we had to do here was, it was our um, 11th grade final for physiology for both semesters. And the, anyone in here knows that, yeah, yeah, that, that was a hard time. Um, and so you would like have stuff like this around, like labels, and you would just have to name everything or what its function was. And uh, I did really well on it. But the thing that really stumped me was the microscope slides. And the reason for that was, like, and I felt like I was prepared, because I went into Mr. Yum's advisory and I had looked at the slides. But the way I studied them was wrong. Because what I did was I would look at them and I'd be like, OK, well, these are the same slides he's going to use on the test. So I just remembered like the colors of like, oh, there's, there's, there's this little curve right here. Just 
just like stuff like that. Just like I remember the actual slide and not try and take the time to understand the content. So when it came to the lab practical, I got to the microscope slides and I was like, what is this? I don't, I don't understand. And, and, I, and I really kind of, that sucked, because like the whole time I felt super good. And that time I was just like, Whoa. I, I, it was really bad. So second semester, I was like, okay, I'm gonna do it differently. And I spent um, like the entire week in Mr. Young's advisory class looking at all the slides. And I'd look at them, and then I'd open up the textbook, look at the characteristics, where it should be in the body, what it does, and that way, no matter what, if I had seen it before or not, then I would be able to um, figure it out. Like right now, I could look at this and be like, okay, this is pseudostratified columnar epithelium. And I know that because they're elongated formation columnar. They're, it's one cell, but there are two nuclei, so it's pseudostratified. And there's these little hairs up here, which are cilia. So I know that this is inside your lung, or inside your trachea. And so stuff like that really helped me in the long run because I, instead of just memorizing it, I was understanding it. Um, and then, <laughs> is that supposed to be funny? <laughs> uh, and my all-time favorite class here at Dojo Libby was uh, Sportsman. And I got the opportunity to become CPR certified. And so Leary told us that, you know, it's not just going to be basic. It's going to be, um, it's going to be like what you learn in a hospital. So I became... AED, which is a defibrillator, and CPR certified for both adults, children, and infants. And here's my healthcare like, provider card. And this was really cool because this was the first time I was able to like actually like use my skills and like in in practice and and take the information I learned from lecture and bring it into like a skills lab, which is really fun. But I had to get used to like the different items, like uh, the patches and stuff like that, where they go on certain parts of your body, like the breathing mask. And I also learned that each person is a little bit different anatomically, so you kind of had to adapt to how each person's body was differently in order to get like a good seal on the mask or to make sure you're putting the leads in a good part so that the shot goes through the heart. Um, and I, I really like playing with this kind of stuff. Like that technology is really interesting to me. And I know I'm going to be needing this exact same stuff in my future. I'm going to be needing to know how to use you know, microscope slides or scanners and stuff like that. And it's going to vary based on my specialty, but all these things are something you have to know basically just to graduate from medical school. And so, and this stuff's super interesting to me. I love looking at like stuff like MRIs and stuff like that. And I know I'm going to be needing that later on. Um, so back to my thesis. The sleepless nights I experienced during my four years at Dojo Libby were exhausting and unforgiving. However, now that I'm at the end of my high school career, I can appreciate that I have learned how to use a variety of innovative media to obtain and display information, use that information to educate others in both public and interpersonal settings, as well as being able to adapt to change during times of unexpected crisis. So, this right here is a picture of me in ninth grade, <laughs> drowning in my own tears. <laughs> and then here's a picture of me my senior year, still swimming in the tears. <laughs> They're not going away anytime soon. I'm going to stay. It's going to be hard. But now I'm able to deal with it, and I'm able to use the resource I have available to me to get through it. And I feel like now that I've gone through this journey at Dojo Libby, I feel very ready to go on to college and I feel like I'm gonna actually come up, come in there and I'm gonna like know what I'm doing and I'm gonna have this confidence and I hope I don't have as much as much the uh, the transitional phase because I've been exposed to such rigor for so long. And this last quote is not from somebody else but this is something from from me and it's that this whole experience at Dojo Libby, I can't say it was easy, but I can say it was absolutely worth it. Thank you.